no idea what I was getting myself into in one day. I had my first Periscope interview and my first Blab interview. So Blab. I was learning That's, uh, learning lots of that stuff. Is, that, that is very impressive. Although I must admit, um, we did smash the Periscope interview too. Just yeah, saying. Well, I, watched, you know. I did watch that. It was good. Yeah, it was meant to go for 20 minutes, ended up going for 50. So we did all right, I think. <laughs> Nice. Just hang on, boys. I've just uh, got a bit of an echo here. I think we'll just turn that off. Right, eh? Got plenty of things happening. But um, look, welcome. Let's kick it off. This is Dohard, the official. There it is. <laughs> Doha 2015 Aussie Flame wrap up. And we've been doing this each night apart from last night. I've got to put our apologies in. I was, I was uh, a wreck emotionally, physically, mentally. I had to just have a night off the blab. So uh, we're here tonight. We've got a bit to catch up on, but yeah, looking forward to um, hearing your news, Scotty. And welcome, as you said, to the to the show. Great to have you on board. You must be still riding high, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, last night was uh, was a good experience um, to to come away with the gold by myself without the circumstances that came with the last one um, was a special special moment for me and um, a big relief, I guess. Um, the, the expectation is to go out and win the race, and um, I was able to to put a race. Uh, together enough to, to be able to do that. So, yeah, still definitely on a high and uh, got a few hours sleep last night, which was good. <laughs> Surprising. I, I wouldn't have thought you'd have had any, mate. You're, I believe you uh, you guys are staying at the Moban Pick Hotel. It's the ice cream um, joint. It also does hotel. I had no idea. And, mate, have you hit the, have, have you hit the ice cream hard yet? Or you got another race to go, I guess? Uh, no, I haven't even touched the ice cream at all. I had a little <laughs> bit of dessert last night to celebrate. I mean, that's about the good. extent of my celebrations, but... Uh, no, not yet. I've got uh, heats and finals uh, coming up for the 200 metres um, starting from tomorrow. So um, yeah. after that, um, time to get fat for a little while, I think. Yeah, very good. And Evan O'Hanlon, great to have you back, mate. A blab veteran, we should say, these days. And, and uh, on the call, mate, it's sounding crystal clear, silky smooth. It's getting better every day, I've got to say. And, uh, mate, how's it all going up your end? Yeah, yes. Yeah, um, lots of fun. A bit stressful. I'm preparing for an interview today with Great Britain and I've never met any of the athletes before, so I'm supposed to go for as long as possible live. That'll be um, interesting. But, yeah, loving loving being in the commentary box. I, I've said to a couple of people, I'm actually having more fun doing all the interviewing and commentary than I would if I was running. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, like running is like running's great and I love doing it, but at the same time, you're so ser- you've got to be so serious all the time and, uh, checking that you're not getting sick and being so careful around other people that it turns into more of a job than fun. While this for me is, you know, it's new, so it's really, really, really fun. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And uh, a big shout out to everyone that's just tuned in. If you're watching either live, uh, great to have you on board. If you're watching on the replay as well, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is an absolute treat to go deep in behind Aussie Flame territory, I guess, and, and get the 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 chat from the guys out there. Doing the business over in Doha, the 2015 IPC Athletics World Champs. Uh, if you could, we'd love you to give it a little share. I know Scotty Reardon, you've got a, uh, half a million or so Twitter followers, mate. So if you could just um, send, it, send it out. And, and Evan, you've got the other half a million. So don't forget to um, don't forget to tweet it out. If you if you're watching, folks, yeah, we'd love you to uh, share it. There's a little share a tell a little bird function within Blab that'll get it onto Twitter. And uh, yeah, tell the world get on Blab. We're going to be doing this every night at around 8.30 Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. And if you haven't uh, caught the first few shows, jump on to mossyandrobbo.com forward slash run, jump, chuck, and you can catch our replays there. Carly Beatty, great interview uh, with her. That was fantastic. So, yeah, jump on board. You can catch all the uh, race videos of all the Aussie medalists on there as well. All the uh, live stream updates, everything you need, it's all on there. So mossyandrobbo.com forward slash run, jump, chuck. Now, but boys, let's get into the show. Uh, Suheim Bin Hamad Stadium. Scotty, first of all, what's it like running in the heat, mate? Yeah, you have the uh, the uh, the daytime heat. Is it as hot as they're all saying? Um, actually, yesterday was quite mild compared to some of the other days I've been out there. Um, we were fortunate enough that we got to to Doha here a, a little bit earlier than most of the teams. So actually, the first two days I had went out and trained. I, I did some training for that that heat that I ran yesterday, and I thought I was going to die the first couple of days that I was here. Yeah. The heat was was quite incredible, and it was really knocking me about. It was. It's just a different type of heat. I don't even know how to describe it. It's just so different. But by the time I came around to yesterday, I'd kind of adapted. And, um, yeah, I think there was a bit of a breeze blowing through yesterday with a 4.6 tailwind wind in my, in my race. So um, yep. it had a little bit of a, uh, a cooler temperature to it yesterday, which 
it's definitely helped when I had to run twice in the one day. But yeah, it's it's definitely hot. You boys that are based <laughs> on, in mate. Canberra. Hang on, mate. So yeah, you think you think yesterday was a bit mild? You obviously weren't stand, sitting where we were in the grandstand in the hot sun for, for the morning session. I, I look like I've come out of a swimming pool. <laughs> that's that's a load of rubbish, though, Hanlon. You guys are in the air conditioned um, no, no. country box getting spoon fed ice cream. That's what I heard. <laughs> no, no, we was we were supposed to be in the air conditioned commentary box, but just the day before the event started, the the uh, French commentary team putting out the French version of what we're doing they emailed the ipc and said oh we've actually got a guy in a wheelchair helping with our commentary so we're going to need disabled access to our commentary area so we got Ooh. shafted we're, Smart we're French. The sun. <laughs> yeah uh, lucky lucky you aussies are tough made of tough stuff what we need to do boys before we uh go further on into the show we need to wrap up day three as i said we didn't do a show on blab yesterday so thinking back to day three uh, it was a massive, massive day once again. And I guess the standout results, we got those three medals. Uh, Isis Holt, everyone's talking the incredible Holt. Uh, how good is well, that youngster, 14 years old? Isis Holt is doing very, very well. But uh, I'm looking forward to the, uh, the big headline when she wins the 200 metres. Holt, uh, sorry, Isis Strikes again in Qatar. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it's a it's certainly a yeah topical name, but um, Isis Holt. You know, hopefully, a lot of the Aussies sporting community now knows who she is. Fourteen year old from Melbourne, um, Melbourne Girls Grammar School, and geez, didn't she turn it on on the track? And then how well she's held it, held herself in all the interviews and uh, everything afterwards. We're, hopefully, we're, we're trying to get her on blab. I'm struggling to get through. She's got a line, uh, 10 deep, <laughs> wanting to chat to her. Um, so we'll hopefully get her on at some point. But, yeah, great work by Isis and her coach, Nick Walls, as well. I know he, had, he was out there with the uh, IH T-shirt. I've put a request in for one of them, if you're watching Coach Wallsy. Um, but, uh, yeah, and with 200 to come, she, she's got to be looking good, the goods for that as well, boys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she she smashed it. 100 to come. She went 200 the other day. Is that right? Sorry, pardon me. Other way around. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. correct. 100 to come. I'm watching bits and pieces of it when I can. But um, yeah, with the way that she dominated that 200 meters, um, especially that as she ran on the bend, um, I definitely think she's a, a big big chance of picking up another gold medal um, in in that 100 meters. And yeah, she's looking the goods. And I have to say, with Isis, actually having spent a little bit of time with her in and out of the physio room, she's. For a 14-year-old kid, she's really mature. She's definitely got her head screwed on, and um, that's definitely into the future as she progresses as an athlete and as a person. That's going to be uh, really really beneficial for her career as she moves forward. So I'm really looking forward to her being successful and leading the Australian team for a number of years. So you're uh, learning a couple of things there from her? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> that's what this is for, mate. This is, this is, um, Cody just asked me to get you guys on for a bit of media training. That's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, that's it. There's actually no one subscribed. This is just private for no. us, three, isn't it? <laughs> that's right. Just, so it goes to thin air. No one, black hole, no one watches this. Um, yeah, so but ISIS almost shaving a, a whole second off the world record as well, her own world record. So that was very impressive. Brianna Coop, we should mention, in the same race, I guess she might have felt a little bit left out, but she ran a big PB herself. So uh, great work by the girls there. On the same night in the, in the 1,500-metre T54 for women, Maddie Di Rosario, cheeky little bronze there. And I'm liking the, the bronze Aussies. We're getting plenty of bronzes. If we can't get, get the gold, well, don't worry about the silver. The bronze <laughs> Aussie, that's the way to go. We haven't even got a silver yet. But she's, she's pushing well. Yeah, bronze or gold all the way. Who cares about silver? Yeah, that's right. Uh, but Except that people are nice. with the bronze. It would be nice. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> It would be very nice, uh, though, to turn a couple, convert a couple of those bronze medals into golds and move sure. us a bit further up the medal table. We're already well past our Leon medal tally of two gold medals because well, me and Scotty were the only... Two gold medalists. Sorry, how many was it? We were four gold medalists. Two gold medalists. Yes. Four gold medals. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, we're all past that already with, uh, with our performances so far on the track. So the sky's the limit at the moment. And you, you make a good point there. Yes, indeed, I am the only person on tonight's blab that didn't win a gold medal in Leon. Um, unfortunately, of course, you didn't qualify. But but, but Scotty's the only one that's won one in Doha ah, and will one yeah. will win one. That's in right. Doha. That's yes. right. You've got it over him. Well done. But, uh, It'll be the first time I've had one yeah. over him actually. So I'll take now, that. 
Now, boys, I know these next two words are very near and dear to your heart. Heart, white tiger. How good is he going? <laughs> running, running off his chops. I know you were, you were pretty much losing it in the com box uh, as he got that bronze in the T, in that 100 metres for the T13 the other night. But uh, how was it, Big O? Good run. Yeah, amazing, amazing to watch Chatty uh, be develop over the last year into what he's been able to put on the track here in Doha. And uh, I was up there. I had to turn my mic off during his race because I was screaming, <laughs> fist pumping, and uh, willing him across the line. Obviously, with Jason Smith back in his class, it's going to be pretty hard to get the gold in that 100 yep. meters. But Jason is gone. He's gone home to uh, try and witness the birth of his first child. So he's ah. not going to be there for the 200 meters. Chad oh, wow. Perris. Could be a smoky for another gold for Australia. Perfect. Yeah, that's absolutely. news. That's that's breaking news. There you go. Yeah. Oh, and he's on again tonight. We'll get we'll get to that very shortly. But yeah, that was basically the uh, the highlights from the day three. Moving on to day four, and uh, we've got the golden boy in the house tonight, Scotty Reardon, hundred meters T forty two, twelve one three. Scotty, um, we'll, I'll get. A, I guess we'll go through a little bit more in depth on the race shortly. But you had a. A, a, a small, a gentler tail breeze in the final. I know uh, in the periscope the other night you were talking up eleven nine, couldn't quite get the sub, but you know still still pretty handy, mate. And, and the main thing, getting that goal. Yeah, I mean, you come to championships to win championships, and it, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how fast you you run to to be able to do that. The the race itself was a quite a poorly executed race, so I'm actually not surprised that um, it wasn't under 12. I'm a little bit surprised that it was still as fast as what it was, which kind of shows that the the form that I was in. But to walk away with that gold medal um, was was something that yeah I've, I've pushed towards uh, over the last couple of years after after Leon and obviously after London as well. So yeah, to walk away with that by myself, um, yeah, it was pretty amazing. And actually, they originally came up on the clock with 12:11, and which is actually what the current world record is and equal. Yeah. 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 So, um, I thought that we, even though Heinrich was here, wasn't here, I was Heinrich. still able to, to, to equal something, but, um, it yeah. wasn't to be the case. And, um, yeah, it will stand for that for a little bit longer, I guess. And, I don't know. and don't worry, Scotty, I pointed out on the coverage about 10 times that Heinrich is injured and unable to attend. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. You got in a bit of trouble. Got, the got in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> I got in a little bit of trouble on the live Periscope interview when I said he might be scared and didn't yes. show up. But don't worry, he is injured. We, well, we do have confirmation. The, the beautiful thing with that, boys, was I was actually watching the live Periscope and he was watching it as well. And I could see his comments coming up and his, he was blowing up big time. I was like, oh, heck is this? So, um, I, keep for, I keep forgetting that people are watching. It's like, it's like what you, we were saying before. This goes to thin air. I keep thinking that this Periscope does as well. Oh, mate. Yes, yesterday, I accidentally... Wrapped out the uh, my surprise for my wedding, and my fiance was watching. <laughs> Oops! Yikes! <laughs> well, there you go. Ugh. Nothing, nothing safe anymore. You boys should know that in the era of social media. Yeah, so, yeah. Be right. Anyway, Heinrich's probably watching this as well. He's been trying to get on that fourth square. Actually, he keeps trying to get on. <laughs> I have to block him. Sorry, mate. It's not a show. Not a German show. Um, well, now, that might have to also, change one day. Well, but well, if anyone well, wants to jump on, we, yeah, yeah, if anyone yeah. wants to jump on, it would be a record for Doha because we haven't had the fourth square filled yet. We need to fill it up. No, we need to fill it up. Yeah. So we'll, we might see. Well, if you can, um, can you boys find the "Tell a Little Bird" button somewhere on your screen? Yeah, I've, I've, we've already done it, mate. We're all yeah. over that. Do it again. we have got to get more viewers on here. That's all right. They'll be they'll be they'll be lining up in the um in the replay. Yeah, I was trying to get oh, IPC oh, Athletics yeah. to retweet it. I don't know if they did. So, I think they yeah, did. I think they I did think, as well. I think I've been saying. Yeah. Well done. Look, mate. Well done. I put in a word with um, my contacts, <laughs> and uh, they said, well, if they, any... they've heard me mention you a couple of times in the live Periscope and live stream, and they thought, well, yeah, we better, we better give him, be give him a run. Uh, I think he does a pretty good job himself. Uh, the first day of the the wrap up show here in uh, in Doha, I see a tweet from from Robbo. I'm like, yeah, that'll be right. Oh, fun, mate, fun, yeah. fun, fun, yeah. and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I don't mind it. You know me, boys. That's yeah. that's exactly right. Now, day four, continuing on. Here's a couple of words that I'm loving as well. Power Ballard, and uh, how good is Angie Ballard going? The second verse, I'd like to call it. The gold in the 400 meters, uh, T53. Her pet event, I guess you'd have to say, she holds the world record in that. And uh, monkey off the back, according to Andrew Dawes, uh, one of the coaches over over there. Um, she was second in Leon, second in in London. The Chinese have been, you know, holding it over her, but she got one back on them. 
Um, she's all class, big O, very impressive to watch. Yeah, really, really impressive to watch. The boys on the live stream are not loving my hashtags with the hashtag Power Ballard, hashtag got to get on it. Uh, White Tiger, hashtag the whole, nah. the hashtag <laughs> le- release the Kraken. But uh, Angie is Angie is impressing them. I'm not, but Angie is. And uh, amazing 400 metres by her. Really happy for her to be able to get it up over the Chinese athlete. She's broken the world record earlier this year and still wasn't confident with coming away with the gold. So to come here and beat the Chinese athlete before going to Rio next year Big would play. have been really good stead. Yeah. And, and uh, that's a Rio event as well. The 200's not uh, on offer at Rio, so even better. That's correct. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Beautiful. Uh, sticking with the Aussie medals, and it was the bronze Aussie for the Queenslander, Tarita Isaac, in the 400 metres for T38 and uh, running 66.06. Again, a cheeky little bronze there, and I'm a massive fan of that. Scotty, were you, were you around to cheer Tarita on? No, unfortunately, actually, I missed both the girls' races yesterday. Um, I actually got back to the, to the warm-up track after my race and saw Angie had some flowers, and I had to, do, I had to ask her. That's actually, a sign. Yes, I, said, <laughs> I know you got a medal, but what colour? Um, but uh, yeah. I, I was actually waiting on the side of the track. The medal ceremony for Tarita's race was actually happening um, as we were standing on the track. So obviously I was under the stadium in call room when, when that happened. So yeah, it was nice to see another Aussie stand on the podium just before I go out and run. Um, definitely a bit of encouragement to make sure that I was going to be standing on that top step. So yeah, good to see you come away with a couple of medals. Yeah, yeah. Very impressive run from an athlete running obviously in a cerebral palsy class, but also running with a vision impairment. So she's got almost a double impairment and able to pick up the bronze yeah no it's sec- sensational work and um uh yeah found her on instagram i wasn't following her but tarita j uh isaac jump on and give her a follow and um yeah she's, she's a yeah i think she should be very very happy with that bronze medal adding to our our tally there and uh we'll get onto the tally very shortly but just quickly before we do jesse white uh a pb in the shot foot f33 throwing uh, 869 great work by him, and also we saw progressing through to the finals last night. Sam Carter, the White Tiger, Chad Paris, Reed McCracken, and of course Kurt Fernley. And we're going to talk Excellent. a little bit about those guys and their chances a little bit later on. But as we do every show here on Doe Hard, it's time for the Doe Hard medal tally, and there it is, boys. As you mentioned, Big A, we are climbing our way back up. So the Chinese, well, they've got a commanding lead, but the Ruskies, the Yanks, and the Poms. They are got to be nervous because look at that, the Aussie flame up into 10. We're coming, we're Let's coming. Go. Looks good. We're looking much and, uh, uh And I've put in an order from the White white Tiger to try and get that gold medal to put us up above those three, the, sorry, the, the Yanks and the Poms there. As, so that would be, as, that would put us in third place. I think that's one of the highest finishes we've ever had. Yeah, yeah. Now, as soon as possible, if we can do that and someone screen grab the medal tally at that point, I'll, that'll be fantastic. Uh, a couple of other shout-outs. The other high-ranking team there, Ireland, using the Aussie flame approach and not bothering with silver. So they got the two gold and the one bronze. And then, and then you got the Kiwis. Well, they, unfortunately, they're slipping down to equal 31st. I can only hope that's an omen ahead of the Rugby World Cup <laughs> next weekend. So the, we'll see how that The goes. Irish there, the two, the two gold medals from the Irish, they're yes. both coming from doctors. Oh, there you go. Jason, Jason Smith, the world's fastest Paralympian, and Michael McKillop, his sidekick and roommate, uh, both got honor, have been given honorary doctorates from the Queen's University of Belfast. And uh, Michael McKillop's on Twitter at Dr. Michael McKillop. And I've been putting this li- the shout-out on the live stream trying to get myself a honorary doctorate, doctorate. from any Australian university <laughs> listening because I would, I would love to be getting around as Dr. Evan O'Han, I'm sure... Scott Reardon would love one too. Yeah, why not? <laughs> of course. Of course. Well, well, you're building up some good contacts, Big O, so um, I'm sure with the contacts you guys have, you can pull some strings there. So but that's, a, that's a wrap of where it currently stands after four days. We're heading into the fifth day. This will be the halfway mark after today, and we'll, we'll rip into a preview of that shortly. But, Scotty, we're going to turn our attention to yourself now, as we've done with our other guests uh, on previous blabs, and I want to just give you a little bit of a wrap here, and we'll, we'll get your story, but... Um, we, we mentioned the, the gold last night in the 100 metres, uh, T42. But what I wanted to do was bring up your Twitter profile. And if you're not following at Scott Rido yet, we'll jump on and do yourself a favour. Here's your profile, mate. London 2012 Paralympic 100 metre silver medalist, 2013 100 metre world champion, personal best 12.13, two times water ski world champion, hashtag Team Rido. Mate, you've had 
How long has it been since you've won? You haven't even updated that yet. <laughs> I know. I actually thought about doing it before. I just didn't get around to doing it. So, um, yeah, you beat me to it. <laughs> yeah, so um, definitely have to update that. <laughs> very good. And uh, Carly, Carly beat you was the same. These guys aren't up on their social media <laughs> skills, are they, Robert? I, this is not only is it media training, it's social media training for you guys as well. I, I need to be over there holding your hand. Yes, but, um, yeah, might just have to give you my, my login details, Robo. You just do it for me. Oh, I, can, I can do that, mate. I can do that. Just shout me a comment. Well, maybe, so, maybe, so we can put a, maybe we can put a hashtag together for Athletics Australia to bring you over as our social media manager next time. Yeah. I'm coming to Rio, boys. Don't, <laughs> Absolutely. Don't, think, you... don't worry. That's, that's what they're no, All right. About. Okay. No, no need to start a hashtag. Well, no, you can start the hashtag. You can start the hashtag by all means. Um, now, Scotty, grew up in Tamora, mate, on the Riverina, uh, down there in beautiful part of New South Wales. Tell us what it was like growing up in that part of the world. Uh, it was awesome, actually. I, I love uh, the, the Tamora community. It's, it's, like a, it's like a big family, um, you know, 4,500 people in Tamora. And you know, I can't even walk down the street, um, even from a young age, without every single person coming down and, and saying hello. So it was a really good environment, and especially when I went through, through my accident and, and those tough times and the the whole community kind of banded together to make sure I, I got back out onto my well, foot after my accident happened. And, and um, right at so much to a point where uh, when, when my accident happened, all the farmers from around the district, because mum and dad are on a farm, they came to mum and dad and said, go to Canberra, do what you need to do and um, and we'll look after the farm. So just little things like that. And it's just the, the Tomorrow community is so generous and uh, it's definitely um, something that I've cherished being a part of that for uh, for my whole life, and um, yeah, I can't forget where I come from because it's such a good town. I, I, yeah, because that was after you that that was after you had that high speed kangaroo chase accident. <laughs> well, this is this is what I wanted to touch on. I want to get some clarification because watching the the live periscope the other night, it was a bit confusing. I I was showing some comments in there. I don't know if you watched the replay, but I thought you got caught up between a kangaroo and a, fighting a shark. What, that how it worked? <laughs> hey, just, just go on my um go on my website and have a look at my blog because um. I've got five tales that I, I tell different people at different times to um, how I lost my leg. And actually, one of those is uh, my old housemate and myself both used to have one leg. Uh, we both have one leg. And uh, anytime we're out and somebody asks us what will happen to us, we're, we're both um, we're cage diving um, with the sharks in South Africa. And one comes straight through the cage and got both of us in the same bite. So, <laughs> so uh, wow. there, there's a few different stories floating around. But you've got to keep it interesting. The thing is, I have no, such a good, good story anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to get... I'm on the blog at the moment. I'm going to get the link for that. I'll stick it up on uh, on here on the blab very shortly. But I, and I'll, I'll mate, what do you got it. set up in your house over there, mate? You should you got see a full it. studio. How, how many screens you got going? I've only got the two. I feel like I need more. Actually, I've got three <laughs> devices. I've got this is providing a bit of light. So this is another iPhone. <laughs> All right. And then if you want to see it, just it's not about me, but this is the garage. <laughs> In the garage, fair enough. This is the garage, and that's, oh. that's the laptop on a wheelie bin. Nice website. Next to the car. So, yeah, there you go. You, you, you're not allowed to do it in the house. Well, <laughs> Good demoted. Sorry, I am, but um, I've got two sleeping kids in there, so I've got a three-year-old and a six-month-old, and oh. everyone's, going to, everyone's going to bed, so I head out here in Hang the on. garage. And... You're, you're letting people go to sleep? Well, no, they get the their sleep before the, no, before, no, this is what I say, kids, go to sleep now, Scotty Reardon's heat's not on till 12.38, <laughs> um, get a little bit of sleep in now, you, you know, you can't expect these kids to stay up all night, mate. Yeah, it's fair enough. Yeah, uh, true, so, true. So, we're, we're sensible here in the Robertson household, <laughs> but, um, yeah, Scotty, I, best, I guess, uh, outside of those five fictitious tales, tell us just uh, briefly how the accident did, how it all came to be. Uh, yeah, I was involved in a farming accident back in 2002 when I was 12, uh, Kind of long story short, uh, we we're digging holes, uh, and I was standing a little bit too close to the to the tractor uh, and some moving parts on the tractor. And I remember looking down and realizing my shoelace is undone. And uh, the next thing I realized, I was sitting on the ground with the lower part of my leg completely amputated. Uh, we're 35 kilometers from the closest hospital, and we're two and a half kilometers down the paddock. So, uh, as you can imagine, 12 years old, um, missing a leg in the middle of nowhere, and not the best opportunity. Um, to survive but um, fortunately um, some quick really quick re reaction from my family uh, definitely saved my life and um, when I accident happened I got up and I hopped into the ute and um, my brother drove us back over to the house and um, I got out of the out of the ute and I hopped into the car and my brother went inside to grab a belt to tourniquet my leg um, and he held onto my leg all the way into uh, all the, the way into into Tamora well until we met the ambulance which was about 10 kilometers out of Tamora from the time when I uh, had the accident to when I got to help was about 45 minutes. So 
me to one survive the accident, but two not die of blood loss. Um, I'm definitely, mm-hmm. um, definitely very lucky to be sitting here talking to you guys. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I guess you know, being a, a tough young kid from the country, New South Wales, probably did a lot for you know for saving as well. But yeah, as you said, that that helped very quickly. I'm glad we're, we're glad we're here to chat to you, and you've gone on to achieve all these amazing things. What does that do for your outlook on life? Um, I guess I've just become a very positive person all the time. I, and the reality is I, I could be and probably should be dead. Um, so and when things are going bad and, and not kind of going the direction um, that I would like them to go, um, you just sit back and, and realise that it's better than the alternative. And that could be not sitting here at all. And um, it's definitely... Um, it's definitely helped me become a better athlete and a better person just going through what I, what I did when I was 12. And um, yeah, I, I, I think these days I, I have the power to be able to help a lot of other people get through certain things as well. And um, I'm definitely get moving into that stage of my life where I, I'm realizing that my story can help people. And, and that's what I'm, I, I'm trying to do more so now. Yeah. It's really good when I interview all the uh, Paralympians around in Doha and ask about their stories and they all have these amazing stories and then they say, oh, what happened to you? And I go, "Um, yeah, I I just was born and didn't know I was disabled. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I hesitate to use the word boring, Big A, but I think I've got to know you pretty well. Um, Yeah, it's not a patch on Scotty's story, sorry. (laughs) Yeah, well. Well, that's what Michael Rowe brings up the crocodile story. Yeah. Look, yeah, well, I don't wish I don't wish any I don't wish anything nah. else on, on myself. So Not happy to have the disability I have. Hey, a um, couple of things, Scotty, just quickly uh, growing up in Tamora and Tamora's rich sporting history. Tell us about that. Some of the legends that have come out of Tamora. Yeah, there's been a few over the years, actually. Um, anybody who's into into the trots, uh, Palface Adios, Adios, the, the Tamora Tornado, very famous um, horse race, uh, horse, horse racer. Um, Not to be actually, confused with her. Not to be confused with Hurricane Hannah of wheelchair racing. Right? <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly right. Um, but yeah. um, t- oh, had, just, it, just on that, Scotty, sorry to butt in. I was actually thinking in terms of a hashtag for yourself, the Tamora Tornado. <laughs> and uh, that, I mean, given that there's a history there, that could actually work. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure whether the, the people, they might even have, have a patent on that already or have it trademarked. I don't uh, know, I'm not too sure. We're Take above, we're above that. <laughs> we've, got, we've, got we've got Evan O'Hanlon on board, IPC. We're, we're fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah well, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to I'll Speak to the head honchos. <laughs> yeah, just talk to my mate Rick down at the Tomorrow Council. He'll be fine. The mayor of Tomorrow, he loves Perfect. me. So. <laughs> He'll be fine with it. Um, but yeah, did, what else? did you know, Robert, Robbo, did you know that Scotty has his own day in Tomorrow? It's Scott no. Reardon Day? I don't. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I yes. He, yeah, 6th of October. <laughs> yep. so and they, they also oh, named their first set of traffic lights after him, I heard. <laughs> There's still no really? traffic lights in Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and everyone just speaks. <laughs> Actually, just while we're here, boys, I have to I have to announce something. We've got a special guest. Here he oh, is. Stop it. Oh. Chad the White Tiger Paris. <laughs> oh, oh, welcome. Got him in the gold medal. I'll take I'll take the speakers up for a second. Uh, they're they're like, um, chatting. Where are you? On the other side, mate. Get it. Good. Okay. Pick the pick, <laughs> pick the disability. Can't find where he is in the in the screen. Chad, Chad, uh, what, what are you doing? <laughs> You should, be, you should be resting. Just getting excited, boys. Don't worry. Where is your Where schedule? Is, your is, schedule? This, is this in your schedule? For those who For those don't, don't know, I was just, just impersonating. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Nice. Yeah. Specific catch. Yeah. Oh, we lost him. Yep. Yeah, Evan's gone. He's, he's had enough. Run, Run well, White Tiger. We're cheering, cheering for you, mate. mate. <laughs> Thanks very much, mate. <laughs> It'll be a big one. Yeah, yeah so um, we get uh, Evan back on. What have I done here? Yeah. No. You just kicked him off. He's, he's no good. Still sniffing around. <laughs> no, that's all right. Yeah. We, he knows when he's overstayed. He's welcome. Um, so, Sporting Legends in Tamora. You were, sorry, you were halfway through it. Who else? Yeah, um, we had a very rich um, history and still do um, in, in rugby league. So, um, names like Trent Barrett, Todd Payton, uh, Steve Reardon, who's my uncle, um, have played in the past. Um, and Ryan Hinchcliffe, who um, has been a part of uh, Premiership Women Teams with um, um, with Melbourne Storm over the last few years as well, and we've actually had. I'm back, baby. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> the KGB yeah, um... heard me talking about Arena, and they cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> Gone enough. Um, yeah, and then we've um, got. 
two in the AFL now as well. So Luke Bruce, who plays for Hawthorne, so now a um, a triple premiership winner, winner and um, his um, cousin, Jake Barrett, debuted for GWS Giants uh, in the last round of the premiership season. So, um, yeah, another guy's come through. And just a side fact to that, um, so Trent Barrett, um, former Australian player in rugby league, um, is the cousin of both Jake Barrett and Luke Bruce. So ah, Kevin in the family. Go. Yeah. There you go. Well, I don't and want to bore you. Remove. I don't want to bore you with the list, but yeah. I'm from I'm from Sydney. They've they've <laughs> got a lot of sports people too. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Again, again, doesn't match tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So, we'll so for a small we'll... for a small town, okay, we do quite well, and um, yeah, definitely proud and a yeah. rich sporting community in tomorrow. That's for sure. What about the water skiing? Had you always been involved with that? Um, th- there's a lake in Tamora, and um, I'd always skied from a young age, actually. I learnt to water ski. Um, yep. A guy by the name of Ma- Marty Moses, who's a uh, family friend for a number of years, and actually that, my dad was his best man at his wedding, and um, he had a ski boat, and I think I was about six at the time. Um, I remember jumping on the, the boom out the side of the boat, and he was bribing me with Mars bars. Uh, if I could get up and ski, I'd, I'd get a Mars bar, and um, that's kind of how I learnt to ski when I was six. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it was, uh, it was something I did kind of on and off it was yeah the ski the, the family used to go on skiing holidays kind of once or twice a year and um as far as tournaments were concerned i didn't even know that tournament water skiing even existed until i lost my leg so uh it definitely it, yeah losing a leg kind of opened me up to to a different world and um i found it and um yeah from from there it kind of exploded i guess and here's a story for you robo marty moses that that was yep. teaching him how to ski yeah i'm pretty sure he gave you a book when he was in, when you were in hospital, didn't he? He did. He certainly did. And and the book he gave him was signed by the author, who is my best man at my wedding in December. It's his oh. father wrote the book. Yeah, small world. Get yeah, out they of both it. went to school together, Marty Two. and um, yeah, and Six. Dom. Is that right? Yep, Dominic Burke yep. and yep. Uh, Max Burke is his son that I yeah. went to school with. Yeah. A small world. So you you like to pr- practi- practically relate it. <laughs> yep, yep, pretty DNA. much. I want a DNA test. <laughs> Very good. I'm feeling out of the loop once again. Didn't get a gold in Leon and not related to the <laughs> to the Reed and O'Hanlon circle. What about um, what about phantom limb pain and Facebook? Scott, tell me a little bit about that and what that's done for your life. Um, well, it led my current girl, well, my girlfriend and and me together actually. Um. Yeah, we um, just as amputees, phantom pains is something that we, we generally get, especially when you're involved in, in any sort of trauma or, or accident. Um, so, and I, it's something I've dealt with for years and years. And I've just started to find a few solutions to, to it over the last couple of years. And um, Vanessa Lowe, who's a German athlete, um, I'm friends with her on Facebook after meeting her at a few championships over the years. And um, one night she put up that she was having phantom, phantom pains and did anybody have any solutions? So, um, Scott to the rescue, I guess, and I sent her a message and, um, yeah, she got back to me and it kind of just, um, took off from there and, um, there was just kind of an instant connection from that and, um, started a long distance relationship from day one, I guess. And, um, yeah, just, it, it kind of grew and, um, here we are today, really happy and, um, yeah, just both gold medalists. It. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I can, I, I can do one do one better than that, Mossy. I've actually got... Sorry, Ro- this is Robbo here. Mossy, oh, sorry, Mossy's Mossy. the less good-looking one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah this, right. this is the one better. Oh, where is it? There it is. So there's <laughs> there's my medal from the 2010 mud run, <laughs> where, I, yeah. where I was the winner of the 20 to 29 age group, and there's Scotty Reardon's gold medal. From a world champion. Yes. Uh, now I'm nice. feeling left out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> where's, your, where's your medal? <laughs> none. None to be had. So we're gonna so we're gonna rush through Vanessa Lowe's uh, naturalisation, make her an Aussie in yep. time for Rio. <laughs> yep. I've been in trouble yeah. for that as well. Yeah. <laughs> from. <laughs> you got you got sound at the moment, Scotty. I can't hear. No, um, I just don't want don't want to talk to you. I got him. It's your no, fault, man. I haven't got him. Have you got me, Ev? Yep. Easily got you. You're yeah. loud and clear from oh, that's weird. Newcastle. I, I, that's but, weird. I put but Scotty Evan over on, there in the Moven pick. No. I put Evan on mute. I don't want him to hear what I'm saying. <laughs> if you're having troubles, Evan, jump jump off. 
and then come back on again. Sometimes that can just clear the system. And we'll talk about so, him while he's not here. See, of course, there we go. Oh, he gives us a dirt bag. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, don't trust the thing he says. He's trying. <laughs> he's trying to come back on. Now, finally, mate, you got the two hundred coming. Um, you got to be feeling pretty confident for that as well. Yeah, two hundred is going to be an interesting race. Actually, the pressure's off now, and um, it's it's going to be. It's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm ranked number three in the world at the moment for that. And, um, yeah, I, I, just, I don't know how I'm going to end up, and uh, it's going to be a really tight race for for the bronze medal, and and who knows how the other boys will run out as well. So, I'm really, really looking forward to just going out and having a bit of fun, um, and seeing how I go. Um, if I run a personal best and it, it's good enough for third, or if it's good enough for gold, or if it's good enough for fourth, we'll, we'll just see how we go. And uh, the pressure's off now. I, I've I've achieved what I want to achieve here. Uh, <laughs> and, um, yeah, we'll yeah what, what he this. said. What he yeah. said. Also, Scotty, just looking at you, I don't know what you're talking about, so sorry for butting in. But uh, just looking at you, because I can't hear you, I'm looking at you a lot. And where the tag Scott Reardon comes across your head, it makes you look like you are completely bald. It, yeah. That, that's his headband. The Scott Reardon headband. Headband. Yeah. I'll, yep. I'll get a little. I'll get a little screen grab of that. That's your headband. That's well, this is what it's going to look like in Rio. There's not going to be any hair when yeah. it gonna, comes around. I'm gonna... It's going to be. It's gone. Yeah, mate. <laughs> Perfect. No, that's mate. I, I'm, my hair. My head. My haircut's heading the same way as yours. That's what the headband's all about. I say it's a pretty so just, pretty thick headband at the front there. Is it? Is oh, that I got the a, secret? I, I got a bigger one recently. Yeah. I had to. <laughs> <laughs> I can hook you up, mate. Don't worry. So you're just going to be in a beanie There's... by the time Ray comes around? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Any better there, big A? I can sometimes hear him, but it's, you're perfect. And over there, they're, they're just obviously uh, they're caught on for the fact that we're having fun here in Doha and they're trying to cut oh. us off. I'm gonna, I'll probably <laughs> leave the conversation and leave, leave you boys to it then. That, that's all right. No, no, no we're, we're done chatting with uh, Scotty. I just wanted to quickly, before you go, Evan, I want to get your uh, preview for tonight. I know you're going to be on that microphone again, absolutely salivating at the Aussie talent, the Aussie flame talent in action. Um, I'm just going to run, run through and we'll get some thoughts from Scotty to wrap up in a sec as well. But uh, kicking us off just after midnight, Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time, Mingara Athletic Club on the Central Coast, Ray Anderson. Now, Ray's studying her HSC. She's been taking exams over there in Doha, I believe, and she's in action in the discus final for the F37 classification tonight. How good's that? Yeah, it's uh, pretty interesting that she's over at a World Championships and, and having to do her HSC. I went to my first World Championships in between my trials and HSC, and I didn't. But to be honest, I didn't really take it very seriously. <laughs> not not the sport I was taking seriously, just not my HSC. My parents <laughs> always joke about how little study I did compared to my sisters. So. Um, hopefully, Ray Anderson is getting some study done in between eating ice cream over there at the Moven Pick. Yes. <laughs> and hopefully, well, it's, it's, she's not. So okay. hopefully, she can get get up there, get a PB, and hopefully, in contention with a medal. That's right. And she was over there at the Glasgow Com Games last year. Caught up with her over there, and uh, yeah, all the best, Ray, tonight, and with the HSC. It's the Chuckers kicking us off tonight. Claire Keitha in the shot put. Uh, F41, that, that final's going on at 12.20 uh, just after, Ray. And then it, it'll be the big one, the big showdown, Kirk Fernley. We've spoken about him on previous shows. The only member of the Aussie Flame to have written a book, and I believe he's, he's, he's just reading that to, to pump himself up before each race. He reads a chapter. And, um, yeah, so he's going well. But, look, an interesting little uh, tactical race to get through to the final that he and Marcel Hoog, work together seemingly to, to blow away everyone else in the heat. So they got free passage into that final. That's going to be a, a cracker. Evan? Yeah, it was a good race. Very interesting to watch, especially the first half of it. Um, just waiting to see when Hoog and Fernley would make a move to see to get out in front. And then when they did, to see how far out they got because the other boys decided, oh, we better slow down here because uh, the third place is very important. So the, the second... Yep. Second half of the race, that pack just watching each other, eyeing each other off and waiting for who, who could hold their nerve and wait for the sprint for the longest. But Fernley through to the final. And I've ta- speaking of tactics, you, you said it was obviously a very tactical race from Hug and Hoog, sorry, Hoog and, and Fernley. I, had a ta- I have a secret tactic for the Australian team for tonight's uh, men's T-54, 40, 40, sorry, uh, 5,000. Yep. Marcel Hoog, he loves pancakes, 
and he loves dark chocolate. <laughs> he said if they're together, he loves them even more. So I was thinking we get pancakes, dark chocolate, the Aussie team all bring that to the track, put it up, put it, Perfect. they all sit in one spot in the grandstand and we'll distract him from the tra- the tactics going on. And hopefully Fernley, hey. hopefully Fernley can it. get himself Huggy. in the right position and boom, blow him away. That's it. Huggy Bear, how about some more dark chocolate, some pancakes? He'll be looking around. And, uh, <laughs> bang. I, I agree, mate. I think that's fantastic. Great. That's why we've got you over there, Evan. You sacrificed your own personal success for that of the team, and it's, it's very honourable what you're doing. Here's another little challenge for you. Um, I don't know if you're aware, if you follow this account or not, but at Fernley's Chair is uh, big on Twitter. It's the mm-hmm. only he's, – he's the, he's the only fella – how good is this? He's the only fella on the team who's written a book and uh, the equipment – that is required for him to compete, has its own Twitter account, um, and he can jump on board at Fernley's chair. So give that a mention on the stream, mate. Yeah, and he's the only member to be, I think, in the Archibald Prize. A portrait of him being, being in the Archibald Prize. He's a man of many talents. <laughs> Very good. And, uh, and I'm, I'm recording this from Newcastle, which is where Kurt lives, only a suburb away. And, oh, wait uh, wait a name drop. <laughs> my connection with my well, my connection with whatever medal he, he gets tonight is that I have been doing a little bit of pacing with the Andrew Dawes coach squad here in Newcastle. So if he gets any sort of medal, um, I'll be claiming <laughs> part of it. If he, if he doesn't, if he doesn't, I, I had nothing to do with it. So, <laughs> it's your fault. So, that's right. That's yeah. right. Didn't pace him fast enough. <laughs> nah, we'll be we'll be cheering Kurt on. Absolutely. One of the absolute superstars of, of the Aussie team, and um, can't wait to see him in, in action. He's big. It sounds weird, but his big race is actually coming up next weekend in the New York Marathon where he won last year and he recently won the Chicago Marathon. So, um, But this is good as well to just see where he's at and against the best in the world, uh, David Weir, Huggy Bear and the, the uh, boy from Thailand that won the 1,500 metres. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that goes. But look, really, Kurt Fernley, yeah, he's, he's a fairly big name in uh, Australian parasports, but Chad Paris coming up at 3.07, the White Tiger, 200 metres, T13 final. Predictions, Evan? Chad Paris. Prediction is personal best. Don't tell him I said that, Scotty, because we'll put pressure <laughs> on him. He'll bloody fall apart. Uh, but he's run a couple of personal bests over 200 metres of late because his 200 metres PB is a bit slower compared to his 100 metre PB. So expect him to run a PB. And without Jason Smith there, could be up there for that gold medal. Love it. Scotty, you're you're just going to sit tight because he's in the room, isn't he? Yep, yeah, he is. He, he, yep. The, the, the tiger's <laughs> over here resting. He's not doing too much at the moment, no. just conserving sleep. his energy. Let him, <laughs> let him sleep. Let him sleep. No, we'll be cheering for Chad Paris. And then the last few Aussies of the night. Well, it's back uh, with the wheelchairs and three thirty. The power ballad. Can we see the third verse? Well, it's only the heats, but it's the eight hundred meters. Matty Di Rosario got the bronze of the night, and Angie Ballard with two golds already. Um, they should both absolutely cruise through to the final in that one. And then Reed McCracken, young Reed at 4.11 or 3.11 Bundaberg time. I know they'll all be up in Bundy. That's the 800-metre T34 final. I can't wait to see Reed, El Rido in that one. He was uh, he had a bit of a brain explosion, I think, with his tactics in the heat yesterday, but he managed to slip through to the final. We'll see what he can do. I think yeah. uh, Irina needs to have a little bit of a word to him and just say, you need to listen to your coach when he tells you, what tactics to use. You don't just make them up on the spot because he'll listen to Irina. She's, you know, she's a bit, a bit of an authority. Yes. No, very good. Young, young Reed. Uh, we'll be cheering him and that's, that's it for the Aussies in action tonight. So that's fantastic. Um, I just wanted to put in a word for my performance of the meet yesterday for to yesterday's sessions. Um, a penis in the discus went to new lengths to break the world record and win, win the disc, seated disc. <laughs> That's actually his name, <laughs> and that actually right. happened. <laughs> and you got to, and you got to call that. Yeah. And they, they had to keep turning the mic on because they were all giggling like little girls because they got to say it on on, on the live stream. Goodness. You can go to the IPC uh, Athletics webpage and see the title of the article: "A Penis Goes to New Lengths to Break World Record," and that was copyright Evan Hanley, two thousand fifteen. I wow. was in the media center. Right. I was in the media center and pitched it to them as the heading for the day, and they, they wow. ran with it. So, <laughs> wow. We also we also had to check. We also had to check the wind reading for Fartinoff in the high jump. Of course, so, you did. Was it legal? 
<laughs> Very not not legal at all. Yeah, it took out all the other competitors, from what I heard. Goodness, I you couldn't script this stuff. That's amazing, and you're in, you're in the thick of it, mate. That's I'm very envious. Yeah, yeah. Also, the force wasn't with Yoda yesterday, who was disqualified yeah, mm-hmm. um, from Scott's 100 meters in the heat. Yeah. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah. Mate. Yeah. And what about finally, uh, Evan, your bit of wrapping, mate, on Periscope. That's gone that's yeah. gone massive. Oh, I, I don't know I don't know if I'd say massive. I started with just under half as you said, I started with just under half a million Twitter followers before this blab. <laughs> and and now, you're, now you're down I'm to hoping 10. I'm hoping to go <laughs> Just, just nudge the half a million um, off the back of this blab. So, my, yeah, Very good. I'm sure they, you will. They've started calling me Easy E, so you know I've got a new nickname, the Big O, Easy E. Nah, Perfect. stick, stick with the Big O. Did you see my Yo! rapping? <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing? He needs to rest. Just pre- <laughs> sorry. Go on, Evan. Did I see um, No, no, I was going to say, Scotty, did you get to witness my, uh, the rapping, the magnificent rap of Easy E? I, I saw it pop up. I um, haven't had the chance to watch it yet. I think I was at the track when it popped up and I was just about to turn my phone off. So I um, haven't had the chance so to have a look just at it some, yet. Just some background on that one because they put it up just as a clip of me rapping, which looks like I've just decided to um, <laughs> bust out a smooth rap. Uh, the... The, boy, the American boys, one of them, David Brown, the T11 100-meter gold medalist from this championships, he writes his own poetry, he writes his own music beats, and he raps. And so I challenged him to a rap-off. And uh, they weren't quite expecting the boy from down under to be the able to, from down under. Lyrically, to wax yeah. lyrically <laughs> so well. And uh, the, the boys from America were quite impressed. <laughs> yeah. That's that was that was impressive. We'll um yeah, I'll, we'll make sure we find it and share it around. I hope it's still live, but not very impressive. We'll get you on Blab. Uh, we'll have a we'll have a show dedicated to Evan O'Hanlon's uh, rapping skills very very shortly. I'm confident of that. But boys, <laughs> you might need to give me some gonna... warning on that one. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Uh, Evan, I know you're not at the Moven Pick Hotel, but mate, as I said the other night, get some ice cream onto the tonsils, mate. Uh, you've got another. What, six more days of full live stream commentary to get through. So don't burn out, but it's sounding great. And thanks, as always, for joining us on tonight's blood. Round of applause. Well played. Thank you very much. And I'll be live on Periscope well again from 2.30 local time with the IPC Athletics talking to Team GB. Awesome. That's 10.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time or oh, tomorrow time, as they, as they call it. Your mind's like and, a calculator. Uh, oh, I just oh, – look, it's up. I, I, it works sometimes. And uh, <laughs> Scotty Reed, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure to, uh, for yourself, I'm sure, to, to be on here and entertained by the likes of us. But, mate, well done again last night and all the best for tomorrow. And, uh, and then onwards to Rio as well. We'll be, we'll be cheering you the whole way and no doubt chatting to you again on Blab and whatever else technology is Excellent. out there. Mate, Thank you very much. Work. Yeah, see how we go on the 200 tomorrow. Awesome. And where, just quickly, Scotty, where can we follow you? Where's your website? Where's the um, socials? All my social handles are all at, at Scott Rido, um, and website is scottreardon.com.au or just search Team Rido. It will all come up. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, boys. Well, there it is. That's Doha, day five, and it's going to be another big day, I'm sure, for the Aussies. And, uh, look, it wouldn't be Doha without uh, going out tonight to that great old uh, or pretty new – Remix. Oh, uh, yes. Shot the champ. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> Lost the <a> light. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm the shop to a champ. Come on. I like. Where is it? Has it gone viral? <laughs> it's about to. Be bad. Yeah, let's share it. Let's get on it. I've already mentioned it on the live stream as well. <laughs> yeah, no, that was excellent. They, we got an IPC retweet from him. So good, there you go. Good. If you haven't seen it yet, it'll it'll be across all your media, social medias very shortly. But Toddy Hodgetts, the man's a legend. We've got to get him on the blab soon. And... Uh, We'll make that happen. That'll be that'll be a dream come true. We'll get him on here. But boys, I'll let you go. Go and eat ice cream and do some running. Do whatever you got to do over there. Absolutely. And uh, as they 
as they always say, do hard or do home. <laughs> See ya. Over and out. Bye. Cheers, boys. Well played. Good on yes. you. Love your work, Thanks, Evan. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks for tuning in and sticking around. And we'll be back again tomorrow night, 8.30 Australian Eastern Daylight Savings time for the day six edition of Doe Hard. Catch you then.